the things a damned demon watching over me how could i have let this happen i'm such a disgrace to atone for this grave sin I can do. Forgive me, Lord Artorius. Melchior's communication art. I send Melchior to check out the Earth Pulse. And what a strange sight does he find. My lord, I have failed you. Lift your head, Eleanor. The Shepherd has a special mission for you. A special mission? You are to protect the Malak Lafiset and bring him to the Lobris Abbey headquarters. This mission is highly classified, and not to be shared with even the Legates. Protect the Malik and bring him to the capital, then? With the utmost secrecy, your becoming his vessel is in fact quite fortunate. Maybe so. But with me as his vessel, the Malik may interfere. This Malik may have his own will, but he can be manipulated. Do whatever it takes to get the job done, Eleanor. You act under my full authorization. Even were it to mean obeying the orders of a demon? But, my lord, what mullet could possibly be that valuable? Are you saying you cannot? Shame is only a fleeting emotion. It is will and reason that ultimately prevail in the face of calamity. My lord, I live to serve the principles of your teachings. The Earth Pulse will soon close. From here on, you must use your own discretion to execute your mission. anything like that again pain is pain is scary right i'm all right no more running away i'm lafi said it's good to finally meet you properly eleanor y yeah likewise don't worry if you try running you won't get far once i've eaten your arms and legs i merely need you alive to act as his vessel nothing more that won't be necessary I swore an oath before our duel. An oath grants power in exchange for a certain constraint. Mine was, if I lose, I will obey my opponent. 
Once put in motion, an oath cannot be broken by the one who swore it. I will keep my promise to you because I must. Hmm. An oath, is it? In that case, I have a question for you. What does the Abbey plan to do with the Nominat? To wipe out the demons, of course. We want to end the era of disaster once and for all. And how exactly does the Abbey plan on wiping out the demons? Is the Nominat going to wander the land, slaughtering them all? They... they never told me. And Nominat's ritual is kept confidential even within the Abbey. All I know is that it involves Melchior. Then it looks like the only way we'll figure out Inominat's true nature is by deciphering Lafayette's book. We'll have to track down Magyu's friend, the one who can read the ancient tongue. If we go to Isult in Southgand, we ought to find some clues to her whereabouts. But first, we have to figure out where we are now. We need to find a settler or a village, something. <laughs> I'm surprised us chuckleheads even know our own names. Even the greatest scholars don't know everything at first. You can't get answers without asking for them. <laughs> Fair enough. Hard to argue with that. I've never seen a Moloch quite like him. Eleanor, your job is going to be to protect Lafayette, even if it brings you into conflict with other exorcists. Because if you turn on me... I know. Like I said, I can't betray you. Listen, Lafayette. If she makes any strange moves, I want you to stop her immediately, okay? I don't think Eleanor is such a bad person. Besides, she's oath-bound to her promise. She's lying, obviously. That's only something you do if your life depends on it. Yep. An oath is an art that takes complex rituals and lots of hard work and time. Hardly worth the trouble, to be honest. I told you already. She wants to take you away from us. Women are creatures of deceit, boy. If you say so. She's right. Of course that goes doubly so for Velvet the Vengeful Villainess. Well, I won't deny it. Hmm. What is it, said? I was told that women's looks can be deceiving, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to see. That's an age-old problem for men. You with me, Aizen? Aye. Women are fickle creatures at best. They lie as easily as they breathe, and men can never see through their deceptions. I totally feel you. Sounds like you've both been through hard times. The wounds women leave on a man's heart take longer to heal than a cut delivered by a sword. Uh, it's that bad? Beware a maiden's tears, boy. And guard yourself well. That's my advice to you. Beware tears and guard myself. Don't put any weird ideas into Lafayette's head, you two. They're just facts. If you fill his head with any more garbage, I'm eating both of you. Yes, ma'am. Yikes. The swordsman and the pirate having troubles with women? <laughs> well, women are nothing if not difficult. I've the deepest sympathy for you both. What do you think of the ladies' reactions? Well, Velvet won't eat either of you, and Magilu didn't seem sympathetic at all. See? Appearances can be deceiving. And it seems you've absorbed the lesson well. Right. I'm not like that, though. Huh? Yes, some women use their tears to manipulate others, but not all do. And I, for one, despise such duplicity. The women who did that to Aizen and Rokuro are just the extreme. Yeah. I can see how much you hate dishonesty, Eleanor. Huh? Um, yeah, that's right. Be a good example for the boy, then, so he doesn't end up like Rokuro and me. I intend to do just that, whether or not you ask it of me. Eleanor is a lot stronger than she appears. I'm here. Let's do this together.
finished here. Let's go. Don't waste my time. You too. Scout ship. Food ready. It's nothing special. Did you think you could escape me? This stone, it's... It's just a rock. Take it if you want. I think it's really rare. 
The way it sparkles. I think it might even be bright steel. Bright steel? Never heard of it. Yeah, it's actually a rare metal used to forge weapons and stuff. You don't find it just anywhere. If there's bright steel here, that means we must be in either end Gand or Isle Gand. Both are a long ways off from mid Gand. I doubt the Abbey has many people stationed out here. That's our pirate! Arr! Here there be treasures shiny and sentries few! At the very least, this could mean we'll be left alone for a while. Nice find, Lucky Set. Thanks! Now wash your hands. Okay. The only way to learn where we are is to find You better be ready. <laughs> Eating you, Luffy said. If people say you can't judge women at face value, does that mean you can with men? Sure. Men are simple creatures. Men are simple. Oh! You talk like you're an expert in all things masculine. But you can only speak for your own family. As if you're one to judge. And I'm sure you've charmed a magnificent lord to be your lover. Sure. What does he look like? Is he tall? None of your business. Don't tell me. He was always on the other side of a swinging door, so you only saw his feet. <gasps> I see. What a lovely crush that must be. I read that story. It was a book called The Legs of a Man. Oh? I've never heard of it. I've read it too. It's a sad, bittersweet tale. But I enjoyed it quite a lot. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Maybe when I have some free time after killing Artorias. <sighs> <laughs> I just wanted to know if men could be judged at face value. It's not often you find bright steel above ground. I hear it's a lot of trouble to unearth, even in the regions it's normally found. Yeah. Mining for minerals takes a lot of specialized techniques and experience on the part of the prospector. They examine the soil, the water, the plants, and so on, where the same mineral was found before. Then search similar environments for the next big find. Sure, but it's not like they succeed every time. It's all a big gamble. Isn't there a simpler way? I read in a book once that you can use a pendulum to find water and metals underground. It's called dousing. What's dousing? You hang the pendulum so it's facing the ground. Then you chant the magic word, Magic Kazam, and wait to be amazed. The little bit of ore on its tip will sniff out buried treasure and underground lakes like a bloodhound on a prickle bore. You don't seriously believe this. Eh, it's just like fortune telling. You win some, you lose some. That's why they call it prospecting. So, if pendulums are used for fortune telling, why the hell is Zavid running around using them as weapons? He uses wind to control its trajectory. I think it's easier for him to manipulate pendulums in a fight than something like a whip or a rope. Oh, that makes sense now. That seems pretty clever. He's probably also doing it to make himself stronger, too. Malakim broadly fall into four elemental types. Earth, water, wind, and fire. Each strong or weak against the others. Wind beats Earth. Savid is a wind Malak. So when he obtains Earth element minerals, his own strength is boosted. I never realized Malakim could be so calculating. Then if pendulums react to a Moloch's powers, maybe they can actually do this dousing stuff like Magilu says. Yeah, it's worth taking that thing seriously. Zavid might like to joke around, but when it comes to fighting, he knows full well just what he's doing. He puts an awful lot of thought into that weapon of his, if you ask me. You don't? I spare all my thoughts for my sweetheart. Yeah, right. 
You just like to cause trouble without putting much thought into anything. complete and utter victory? You there. Got a moment? Gah! Are you guys with the sword breaker? The what? Get, get away from me! I'm sorry, all right? Real class act. Attacking as you apologize. <laughs> Mighty demon, I beg you! I'll do anything! Just spare me! I only wanted to ask you something. You don't have to worry. This woman here is an exorcist. Huh? R right. I'm Eleanor, a Praetor exorcist. Please, remain calm and hear our questions. You do look like an exorcist, but... What are you doing with ruffians like these? 
Top secret Abbey business. That's all I can say. Now, can you tell us where we are? And are there any ports nearby? You don't know? You're on Cadnick's Island in Islegate. The port is at the other end of that ravine. I'll send a Sylph Jade to the Von Eltia. Thanks. One more question. Who's this sword breaker? Ah, he's a demon. Causes lots of trouble around these parts. He only attacks sword fighters, and he breaks their blades. He's even taken down a number of Praetors. Hence the name Swordbreaker. He wields a fine sword, clearly forged in a foreign land. I tried to find his lair to steal the weapon for myself. But that's when I was attacked. A foreign sword? I'd be careful if I were you. If he spots that sword on your back, <laughs> you'll be in a world of trouble. Sounds like a real nasty fellow. Well, he tries to pull anything on this demon, and he's in for one munchy, crunchy surprise. <laughs> you folks are all crazy. Either way, I'd say this is a blessing in disguise for you. You're lucky to still be alive. Take this chance to abandon your life of crime. Let's find that port and meet up with our ship. Hmm. Can you read any of this old writing? No. I've studied many languages, but I've never seen script like this before. Can you read it, Eleanor? I've never come across this language either. Where did you find a rare tome like this? Um, well... It was a lucky find at the capital. What can I say? The kid loves to read. I was surprised to see how many Malakim like to read. Genfu does a lot of reading, too. I didn't know that. It's true. I'm not sure what he's been reading, though. Did someone call for me? Bienfu, do you like to read, too? Oh, yes. Books are a treasure trove of knowledge. But I'm a greater Malakim, so the literature I enjoy might be a bit above your level, Lappy said. How to talk a human female into becoming your vessel and physically escalating with cuties. Bien? Oh. <laughs> physically escalating. What does that mean? You, you don't really need to don't know. need to know. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm confiscating all of these. And I have some questions. Bien Fu, you better be ready for a thorough interrogation. Bien! You look like you're having fun, Rokuro. Well, I'm a Yaksha. A Yaksha? A spirit of war? Yeah, a demon that lives for combat. But this Swordbreaker has cut down Exorcist with its foreign blade. Aren't you scared? Of dying, you mean? Yeah. I'm not afraid of dying. It's more that I'm afraid of not being alive. Huh? Fighting is my life. It's all I want to do. So I fight. That's what living means to me. Ah. Living only to kill. A demon is always going to be a demon. Well, if you're going to be blunt. <laughs> Time to dish up, Spank! <laughs>
scary things um have you looked in a mirror lately you really go crazy with all that paper you think i'm the one that's going crazy We're finished here. Let's go. Just how does this sword work? Don't touch it. You'll hurt yourself. In other words, the rest of her is fair game. Not unless you really want to get hurt. Scout ship setting sail. Scout ship setting
It's hungry? Bingo! Very nice! And this? It's disturbingly happy? Love you. You're making it kind of obvious. What's wrong? An enemy. That sword. Is that Storm Quell? A demon wielding a foreign made sword. You must be the sword draper. I'll take this one. Come and get me! Sorry. 
just got a little riled up. Do you know that demon? No, but I know his sword. A blade called Stormquell. Stormquell? Whatever. It doesn't have anything to do with us. Let's just get to the portal already. finished here. Let's go. Ah! Lavi said, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I thought he was going to kill you. Yeah, I know. You were just doing what you thought was right. Yeah, maybe so. That's good then. I didn't give you a clear enough warning to stay out of it. If it ever happens again, I'll give you a proper warning. You really don't want me to help you? Even if your life is at risk? Yep. Why? Actually, I'm not too sure myself. Huh? There's somebody out there I need to defeat by my own hand. I want to strike him down. I want to triumph against him. But to do that, I need to be a better swordsman. Someone you have to defeat. In a sword fight, yeah. And I'll do anything to ensure I come out on top in the end. No matter how much it costs me. Life, limb, hell, even my heart and soul, I'll pay it. Those feelings have been so central to me for so long. I lost my dang humanity somewhere along the way. Why do you need to win that badly? <laughs> to be honest, it beats me. Maybe it has to do with me being a demon. Or maybe that's why I became one. Either way, it's more important to me than life itself. More important than life. But still, I owe you for saving me back there. There's no victory pose in store for me if I'm dead. Uh, okay. Is that how you thank someone for saving your life? Huh? I'm just being honest with the little guy. And no offense and all, but why do you care? You don't even think it disrespectful? You truly are a demon. Yep. Big old demon.
ready for this. Scout ship. Hmm, now why does that name sound so familiar? Hey, Eleanor? Thanks for stepping in earlier. Think nothing of it. My orders are to protect you, so I did. Oh, I see. Of course, orders are no orders. I'd save anyone under threat from a demon. Well, how noble. Oh, I got it! Got, got what? The tragic tale of the sword storm quell. Gather round and listen, oh grimy travelers. Once, centuries past, there was a sword renowned the world over for its peerlessly sharp edge. Its forger shrouded in mystery. So mighty was each swing of the sword, it produced howling winds that could level mountains. No other sword could match its power. The people, in their superstition, began to call it the Godblade. This Godblade... is it Stormquell? Shush! The tale is merely beginning. Now, there was one man who was truly enamored with the Godblade. His name was Kurogane, a blacksmith of wondrous talent. His heart was set on forging an even greater sword. And he had a name in mind for this sword. Stormquell. The sword to conquer the Godblade's roaring winds. And did he make it? Kurogane forged scores of challengers to the Godblade. But each would-be Stormquell was shattered by the implacable howling wind. Some say the wielder of the Godblade chopped off his head. Others say he took his own life. The truth is lost to the dusty cobwebs of history. But perhaps he, and his grudge towards the Godblade, somehow yet live. 
A grudge that spans centuries. You hear tall tales like this all the time. That sword and its inscription we saw were probably just inspired by the legend. Perhaps. But if that's the real Storm Quell, we should all sleep with one eye open tonight. What makes you say that? Because that god blade Kudogane wanted so desperately to top has been passed down through my family for generations. Its name is Stormhowl. Oh. In other words, we could well bump into your armored friend again. Let's hurry it up.
here. Listen, Lafayette. What is it? You can't trust her just because she said she'd protect you. Orders or no orders. Remember, Malakim are just tools to exorcists. But... she really did protect me. I know you feel you owe her for that. But do you have to look so happy about it? Sorry. I'm not asking for an apology. I just want her to know that we've all got an eye on her. No matter how close you two get. I want her to understand that I come first. So... What do you want me to do? Let's see. To put it simply, I'm number one, and Eleanor is number two. Got it? I get it. You're number one, and Eleanor is number two. Right. I'm number one. Wait, this is kind of stupid, isn't it? It's alright. I understand. Uh, that's not what I mean. to go easy. doing here oh I think these were used to keep robbers away like wards around old King's tombs I've read about this there's a trick to the stone it reacts to heat heat huh then there's only one thing to do Hurt? 
Can you stand? Yeah. Are we ready for this? Don't get careless!
lot of training. Is training hard? Scout ship settings.
It's nothing special. You aren't the craziest demon. Your body's harder than your own sword. Who's this? That's Lord Shigure, one of the only two legged exorcists in the entire abbey. <laughs> A legged, same as Melchior. Eleanor, fancy meeting you here. What the hell happened to you? you get captured by a demon? Or are you a turncoat? Uh, I... I'm... Eh, don't matter. I do my own thing. I got no standing to tell you how to live. Still, today's my lucky day. Never thought I'd encounter the one and only Stormquell. Shigure, I think someone over there wants your attention. He looks lonely. <laughs> You're right, I'm being a jerk. Just can't pass up the chance to tease my little brother. Can I, Rokuro? Your brother? You haven't changed a bit, Shigure. You go blind, dumbass? I'm bucket load stronger now. You're the one who hasn't changed, I bet. You still hung up on trying to take me down? The one you want to beat in a fight? That's him? I'm not who I was that day either. Brother. Oh, wait. You're a demon? Ha! <laughs> now it's getting good. But I wonder, has that really changed anything? When my real storm howl breaks your sad reject again, you gonna piss yourself like last time? What I need you to stay out of it. Uh, all right. Too long since we crossed swords, brother. Oh, oh, shut up! You're dead! I'll make you regret sparing my life last time! For what? For what? For what? Hold up! I 
feisty as a demon. I like it. <laughs> But alas, I think our fight's over. Rokuro! What? My... my body! I said stay out of this! We're just getting started! No backing down for you this time, huh? But we're done for today. Oh, calm down, Rokuro. We could have a real fight sometime if you actually brought a decent sword. Go ask that old bastard there to make you one. I'll be waiting. Huh? Who? That demon in the armor, Kuragane. The blacksmith from the story. I'll be waiting for you at Port Cadnix. Unless you can beat me, you ain't getting off this island. Who are you to decide that? You got a problem with it, lady? <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck, you demons. You'll need it. Lord Shikude, sir. I'm on a high-level mission. Eleanor, babe, I get it. You've gone rogue. Have fun with that. I see you again. I'll kill you. Uh, uh. He wasn't even trying yet. You can tell. But if we all fight him together... That won't work. But there is another way. What are you talking about? What way? Follow me. Aren't we going after him? This is his fight. It has nothing to do with me. But Shigure said he'd be waiting at the port. He may be a nutball, but I don't think he's fool enough to let us slip past. Exactly. And as a swordsman, he's even more skilled than Artorius, and that's saying something. We're mice with our tails pinned, and the cat's licking his lips. At the very least, Korogane seems to have some kind of plan. Fine. We'll hear what he has to say. What was that fat cat creature with Shigure? You mean Morgrim? She's a Moloch. She just looks different. And? And what? She has all the abilities of a Moloch. I'm not trying to keep anything from you. All I know is her name and that she's a Moloch. Huh. Lord Shigure is an exorcist legate, but he's also a warrior who can match exorcists or demons even without the use of Moloch arts. Since no one has ever seen Shigure use an art, Morgrim is considered one of the Seven Wonders of the Abbey. The Seven Wonders of the Abbey! No one knows Morgrim's capabilities, or even the details of Shigure's pact with her. No one! Except me, that is! Huh? This is all highly classified, but... Morgrim is incredibly lazy. The price she demanded of Shigure for making a pact with her was... grooming and deep fleeing! Anything else? Oh, and on a point of sensitivity, she's chubby, not fat. She may be our enemy, but she's also a woman. You should try not to hurt each other's feelings. Oh, anything else? Her thick eyebrows are all the rage with Malakim, so much so that false eyebrows are expected to be the next big thing. Oh, well, if he's that strong without Moloch arts, I don't want to see what he's like with them.
What were you thinking, Eleanor? Attacking a legate like that? Uh, well... Oh, I just thought Rokuro was going to die if I didn't intervene. Oh? You'd kill one of your own allies for a demon? I... I acted without thinking. Sometimes I'm too soft-hearted to a fault. I'd say it's less that, and more just stupidity. You're supposed to be protecting Lafayette. Don't get yourself into trouble you don't need. Even if one of her own is in danger? Even then. This kid must be really important to her. All right. I understand. Luffy said. Next time she acts up, stop her. Understand? We don't know what she's got up her sleeve. O okay. Thanks for not telling on me, Eleanor. And I'm sorry I hijacked your body. I understand how it feels to want to protect your friends. The problem's with those demons, not you. But I think Velvet has the capacity to feel the same way, too. At least when it comes to her brother. Is that why you're staying with her? I'm... I'm not sure. It's hard to say. I have to figure out what's going on with this group. If I ever hope to wrest the child from them.
hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. those swords that's what happens when the legendary blacksmith kurogane toils so hard he forgets to die i gave up everything thinking of nothing else but forging a sword that could surpass storm Howl. and before i knew it you had traded your humanity for demonhood i see i'm not the only one so great was your grudge against your brother the inheritor of Stormhowl. Well, guess we're not so different. You don't suppose you could hammer me up a new sword, do you? I've forged countless blades over these long years, yet not one has proven a match for Stormhowl. And yet you still seek a Kurogane sword? I'll put it like this. No matter how much you've failed across the centuries, you've never broken. Well, I'm the same way. If anything can break Shigure and his god blade, it's the bitterness I carry. Strangely enough, seeing you and your brother has given me an idea that might work. I will forge you a new blade. Should we get some bright stone? Nope. No need for that. Huh? Should I take it from the top? If you would, my arms are all I'll be needing. What are you doing? Don't be alarmed. I'm just cutting free some raw materials for the sword. You see something new every day. You need his head to make the sword? That's right. With this fine clump of pure resentment, I shall forge your imitation storm howl anew. No. I only keep this imitation as a reminder of how weak-willed I was in the past. To defeat Shigure, I've perfected the art of dual wielding, a secret Rangetsu technique. All right. If that's what you prefer, a pair of short swords it is. We'll 
wait outside. The ship is on its way, right on schedule. Of course it is. They don't have the Reaper on board. One more thing. Apparently, Shigure is Arturius' bodyguard. So we'll have to face him down sometime, no matter what. It's in our best interest to get rid of him while he's working alone. The problem is, Rokuro can't beat him by himself. Agreed. Shigure is not to be trifled with. Certainly. That's why, when Rokuro creates an opening, we're going to take Shigure out. You want us to meddle in somebody else's private quarrel? If it affects my own quarrel, yes. I suppose I'm in the same position. Besides, I can still use him. There's no sense in throwing his life away. Rokuro's not really a guy to care about the big picture. He might try to hack your limbs off a bit, but he'll get over it. <laughs> Rush out to the docks to scout the place out. Pretty smart, am I right? I pity that creature sometimes. That Kurogane, though, what a character. Giving his own body to forge a sword, like some kind of ritual sacrifice. Ritual sacrifice? It's certainly something only a demon would do. It was a necessary sacrifice in order to gain power. A necessary sacrifice? What a vicious turn of phrase. Indeed. Still, I can't say I'm not thrilled to see how it all turns out. If what you give is mere meat for a god's morbid lunch, could there be a more trivial sacrifice? But if the offering is one's own body and soul, even a single hair can be portentous. I wonder what she will have been in the end. Rokuro, Kurogane, I just do not understand them. You saw them. Demons. We're crazy. Sure. But they go through life with such crystal clear sense of purpose. Even demons have things they're not willing to let go. Or do you think us mere animals, running around killing people left and right? I know, I know. I understand demons still have a certain consciousness. But I look at those two and they seem passionate, like normal people. Well, I've yet to meet a human so passionate he'd chop his own head off. Do you have a purpose like they do? I do, in fact. Ever since Artorius used my brother as a sacrifice. Typical demon nonsense. The Abbey exists to protect the people. Yes, sometimes cold, painful decisions need to be made to protect the many. But they never stoop to human sacrifice. Besides, as Shepherd, Artorius will cleanse the world of... If that's what you think, ask the precious Shepherd yourself. Ask him just what he did three years ago. He wouldn't. He'd never... Rokuro wants to slay his brother, even if it kills him. And Kurogane had his own head lopped off just to forge powerful swords. How do those two find it in themselves to go so far? It's just how they are. They're demons. Not exactly normal. Yeah, it's scary. But I also kind of admire it. But me, I don't have anything I'm that desperate to accomplish. Not yet, you mean. In time, you'll find something. You really think so? Almost certainly. But don't feel you have to go and risk your life over it. You're not a demon. And you should stay that way. You deserve a normal life. Okay. But never mind. Just the foolish ramblings of a demon girl. Bad, bad news! A group of Praetors have left the docks and are headed this way! They said they were coming to purge Eleanor the traitor! Purge? Velvet, what do we do? We take them head on. And you're fighting with us, Eleanor. An order, I presume. It is. Protect Lafayette And defeat the exorcists. All right. I understand. Just remember, if we lose Eleanor, Lafayette will turn into a demon. I haven't forgotten. But we need to pool all the resources we have. She needs us for her own ends. And we'll use that to our advantage in this fight. Just don't push your luck too far, Velvet. And so recently was she a noble, upstanding young exorcist. 
How quickly one falls when entering Velvet's dark orbit. Ask me if I care. Praetor Eleanor, you should be ashamed of yourself, cowering to demons. Your collusion could spell disaster to the Abbey if left unchecked. The only possible atonement is your death. Betrayed the people and sullied Artorius's ideals. No, that's not. <laughs> Velvet, she's testing me. I know I have to fight. My mission calls for it. But any more of this will kill them. It's time for you to die and be purged! Eleanor! <laughs> I can't do it. I can't kill them. I'm not done yet. There. Now we're even, Eleanor. You've got new swords. Sinister. I like it. I take it you're ready. Yeah. All that's left is to kill Sigure. With me as a witness. <sighs> I... I... Keep on fighting like that, and you'll be killed. And if you get killed, Lafayette will lose his vessel. I know that. Velvet, wait. You're, you're not going to kill them? I'm just not that hungry right now. I've got new orders for you. Fight the exorcists, but make sure they don't die. Understood. I guess that was as far as Eleanor could go. I think so. Push her any further and she's bound to break. <laughs> Ever the virtuous exorcist. That very virtue is what lets her be Lafayette's vessel. Besides, I can't help but admire her commitment. She's enduring total disgrace to accomplish her mission. 
How uncommonly pleasant of you. Pleasant folks don't use people the way we do. Yeah, you got that right. Hey, Bienfil? I was wondering if I could talk to you about something that's on my mind. I figured it was just about the time that you and I had the talk, actually. I've seen it all, heard it all, and even tasted it all in my time as a Moloch. Ask me anything you want. Thanks. I was hoping you could let me borrow those books you were reading earlier. If that's okay. You mean how to talk a human female into becoming your vessel? And how to get the cuties? Hey! Keep it down! Keep it down! But you and Madame Eleanor have already formed a pact! Why do you still need either of those books? Well, it's like when we're alone together, things get so awkward. It's hard to talk with her, you know? <laughs> that happens a lot with Malakim and Vessels who are still new to the whole thing. I've been there. In that case, I've got an even better book for you. Whoa! You read a lot of books. I'm just an avid learner, is all. Now let's see. Oh, here we go. Hot spring topics, bearing your body and your soul. Being upfront and honest is always the best policy. I... I don't think we'll be bathing in any hot springs together. Do you have anything else? All right, then how about... After bath party games? Dropping your defenses and your towels. Why do you keep trying to get us naked? I think that would just make things even more awkward. Picky, picky. Tell you what, you can just look at my collection and pick whatever sounds good. Love hacking. Living long and loving hard. Diary of a diary thief. Hands speak louder than words. All classics. I remember reading them when Miss Magilu and I were struggling to get along. Oh, to be young again. You ever think maybe things would have been easier if you never read these books? Reading the mood. Knowing what to say and how to say it. That one's a winner. A must read for sure. Are you two reading something together? We are. We are. Lobby Set's been worried about that awkward distance between you two, and he came to me for some advice. I've heard his side of the story, so let's you and I grab some tea and talk about what to do about it. Come on! Let's go, let's go! Oh, okay. Knowing what to say and how to say it. I don't think this will help either.
Hey, Rokoro. Why did he call your storm howl a reject? Well, you see, when blacksmiths make swords, they don't just make one at a time. They make a whole bunch. The best one of them all is the one that gets presented to the swords commissioner, while the rest are tossed aside. Huh. I didn't realize the standards were so high. The head of my clan gets the real Storm Howl, and his siblings get the remainders. So one is real, and the others are imitations? I guess so. Shigure has the real one, and... Yeah, I guess that makes mine an imitation. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply... Don't apologize. You got me to finally realize something. It might just be why I'm so hung up on beating him. Oh. And to Velvet? Which Luffy said is real? And which is the imitation? Oh. What are you saying? She means my name. It's the same as Velvet's brothers. Huh? The one who went and got sacrificed by Artorius. Surely you are mistaken. Our shepherd would never do such a thing. But what else could make Velvet hate Artorius so much? I... I don't... So you have a truth, and Velvet has a truth. Now which is the real one, and which is the imitation? Uh... <laughs> Nothing special. You and Shigure both use the Rangetsu style. But to me, it looked like you both fight completely differently. Why is that? Our school encompasses two distinct forms. To the outside world, we're known for fighting with a single great sword. But we also study dual short swords should need a rise. So, Shigure uses the great sword, and you use the short. In most schools, wouldn't the secondary technique be used primarily in support of the first? That's true for us as well. We learn the dual short swords to provide sparring partners for those studying the great sword. Then why would you handicap yourself against Lord Shigure? He's no mere swordsman. As I'm painfully aware, Shigure is a true master. We trained together since we were small children. I was his sparring partner for ten years. 
His skill with the great sword is godlike. So, in order to beat him, I took up the short blades. To our school, it might be secondary, but it's what I know best. You're badly disadvantaged in reach. If I eliminate my fear, I have a chance. If I can control the terror of being split in half, and I can step inside his guard, he'll have two times the trouble. Eliminating fear, huh? The style for someone who's lost his humanity. Right? It's like you two brothers are the very swords you carry. Huh? Stormhowl, a godlike sword known to all as the strongest there ever was. Stormquell, burdened by the ceaseless struggle to best the other. One, an exorcist who walks in the light. One, a demon moving through the shadows. The only thing these two polar opposites want is to cut down the other. Precisely! Both are renowned blades. But I don't see what exorcists and demons have to do with it.